Hello everyone, welcome to a new lecture. In this video we are going to explore Earth's internal structure. Earth seems like a solid planet all the way through and from the outer appearance we can't tell much about the internal structure of this blue ball. But how is the internal structure of the Earth? Well, just like a piece of fruit, if we cut a piece of fruit in half we will see that it is composed of three parts. It is composed of a very thin skin, a seed of significant size located in the center, and three, most of the mass of the fruit being contained within the flesh. So just like this piece of fruit, if we cut earth into half, we would see a very thin crust on the outside, a core of significant size in the center, and three, most of the mass of the earth contained in the mantle. So earth is composed of three layers or four. The core is divided into two parts. So it is composed of the crust, the mantle, the outer core and the inner core. The crust is a very thin skin that wraps the earth and all the continents and the oceans, the water is contained in the crust. The mantle is below the crust and has a very huge volume. Actually, it's the largest layer. After that comes the cores, the outer core and the inner core. The crust is about 70 kilometers thick, which is equivalent to 43 miles. The mantle is about 2,900 kilometers thick. The outer core is about 2,300 kilometers thick. And the inner core is about 1,220 kilometers thick. Thick. These layers are defined by either their chemical or their rheological properties. Rheology means the study of flowing. So these layers are composed of different materials that they flow differently. So based on the rheology or based on the way these materials flow, the earth is divided into these layers. So let's look at each of these layers in more detail. The first one that we have is the crust. The crust is about 70 kilometers thick which is equivalent to 43 miles. There are two different types of crust. The thin oceanic crust is composed of primarily basalt and the thicker continental crust is composed primarily of granite. The low density of the thick continental crust allows it to float in high relief on the much higher density mantle below. So the continental crust and the oceanic crust are the two types of crust that we have. The continental crust is 2.7 gram per centimeter cube and it's less denser than oceanic crust. This is the reason why oceanic crust is below continental crust. And something you should keep in mind, the layers of the earth are arranged this way mostly due to density. So the crust is less dense than the mantle. The mantle is less dense than the outer core and the outer core is less dense than the inner core. So density rules when it comes to layering of the earth. So let's come back to crust. So as we know, continental crust is about 50 kilometers thick and the density of it is about 2.7 gram per centimeter cube. The rocks that we have in continental crust, mostly we have granitic rocks. But on the other hand, the oceanic crust is about seven kilometers thick and the density of it is about 3.0 gram per centimeter cube. The rocks that we have in oceanic crust is mostly basalt, diabase, and gabbro. These are the rocks that we most see in oceanic crust, but in continental crust, we most predominantly see granitic rocks. So after crust, we have a region that is called Moho. Moho is the boundary between the crust and the mantle. It's about 5 to 10 kilometers thick below the oceanic floor and 20 to 90 kilometers with an average of 35 kilometers beneath the typical continents. So Moho is the boundary that lays between the crust and the mantle. It has some different physical properties that we will discuss in later videos that makes it distinct. Also, it's about 5 to 10 kilometers in average about the oceanic floor and 20 to 90 kilometers beneath 
the continents. After this comes the mantle, which is this orange layer. The mantle is about 2,900 kilometers, which is equivalent to 1,802 miles thick. It constitutes 83 of Earth's volume. It is the largest layer in Earth. Mantle is composed primarily of not molten rock, of not solid rocks, but on a rock that is kind of solid plastic. And the composition of these rocks primarily is 46% is silicon oxide, 38% is magnesium oxide, and 8% is iron. Earth's mantle is thought to be composed mainly of olivine-rich rocks. It has different temperatures at different depths. The temperature is lowest immediately beneath the crust and increases with depth. The highest temperature occur where the mantle material is in contact with the heat producing core. This steady increase of temperature with depth is known as the geothermal gradient. The geothermal gradient is responsible for different rock behaviors and the different rock behaviors are used to divide the mantle into two different zones. We have the upper mantle and the lower mantle. The upper mantle extends from the Moho to a depth of about 660 kilometers and the lower mantle lies between the transition zone which is in depth of 660 kilometers and the liquid core. We have three types of mantle or the upper mantle. We have the lithospheric mantle, we have the asthenospheric mantle and we have the transition zone. Rocks in the upper mantle are cool and brittle, while rocks in the lower mantle are hot and soft, but they are not molten. You should keep this in mind. Rocks in the upper mantle are brittle enough to break under stress and produce earthquakes. So most of earthquakes that we have are usually produced in the upper mantle because the rocks that lay in this region are hard enough to break and cause stress in the crust. So this is a basic that you should know about the mantle. We have the upper mantle, the lower mantle, and mantle is the largest layer in Earth. After this comes the outer core. The outer core is about 2300 kilometers thick and the density of the outer core is about 5.6 to 9.9 .9 gram per centimeter cube. The outer core or the state of the material that lays in the outer core is liquid. So, so far we had the crust to be solid. We had the mantle to be in a plastic state, which is not solid, not molten, but in between. The outer core is liquid and it is composed of iron and nickel mostly. The core I'm not talking about the outer core. The core accounts for one-sixth of Earth's volume and one-third of its mass. The reason of this heaviness of the core is that it contains a lot of iron and nickel and these two materials are really dense. This causes the outer core to be extremely heavy. After the outer core we get the inner core which is the innermost part of the Earth. The inner core is about 12-20 kilometers thick and the density of this inner core is about 12.6 to 13 grams per centimeter cube. The inner core is solid, not like the outer core which was liquid. The inner core is solid and the inner core is composed primarily of iron. Even though the inner core in this picture looks big, but the inner core constitutes 1 over 142 of Earth's volume. So it's very, very tiny, but it's extremely dense. This is the reason that the inner core lays in the innermost part of Earth, because it's extremely dense. Inner core is extremely important for Earth because it is composed of iron and it's not static, meaning the inner core moves. This movement of the inner core, which is iron, creates magnetic field around Earth and protects the entire Earth 
or humanity and all the living things on earth from solar radiation so the solar radiation that we have coming from the cosmos and the outer space hitting earth these are very dangerous radiation but due to the rotation of the inner core which is iron it creates a magnetic field around earth and it protects the entire earth from these solar radiations and that's one importance of inner core beside many other importance that it has so with this we come to the end of the lecture so to recap the entire lecture